Welcome to our third annual Low Blow Awards. I am Justin Goodrum, along with Jorge Hernandez and Will McClary. What's going on, guys? Hey, happy How's it new going? year, guys. Happy new year. A third year doing this show. <laughs> we're still here. We made it after the <laughs> supposed apocalypse. We did. <laughs> we survived. Um, we're the host of the Low Blow Podcast. Uh, we come on every Thursday night, um, 8 o'clock Mountain Time, 10 o'clock Eastern. We break down both national and local mixed martial arts and boxing. Uh, our show gen- generated started in 2009. We've been going strong ever since. Um, this has been a year-on tradition. It's one of my favorite shows of the year mm-hmm. where we get to recap um, the highs and the low of each sport. So, uh, guys, let's get into it. Um, it was a very interesting year in both boxing and mixed martial arts, especially because, in my opinion, it seemed like boxing had the better year. But we'll talk about that later. But I want to get your guys' opinions on what were some of the highlights and some of the lowlights of boxing and uh, mixed martial arts in 2012. I think the lowlights would obviously be for MMA f- with all the injuries that actually took place. And it was hard for, I mean, th- there were some events that did recover from that, ultimately losing a lot of stars. But for the most part, I think it hurt mixed martial arts or just, I guess, the UFC. Also, I guess the fallout of Strike Force, the way it actually happened, oh, yeah. it wasn't <laughs> gradual. It just came out of nowhere. And it was actually d- a decent promotion. But like you've said before, it's good that you have your best athletes in one league. So I think that's what stands out to me the most. And some of the highs, I guess, for boxing was the matchups. I mean, we've been discussing that for years, just to make better matchups. I think this year we had great matchups, but the lows would definitely be the rise of the performing enhancing drugs. A lot of great fights were canceled because of that. So hopefully that doesn't carry on into this year. Yeah, I have to kind of agree with you. I think this has been a big year of transition for mixed martial arts. I mean, Bellator pretty much took a year off because yeah. they're preparing for their Spike TV debut, which goes on, I think, in two weeks. Um, not to mention Strike Force wasn't really handled too well, like you said, Jorge. Mm. And also, you know, <clears throat> this was the first full year of the Fox television deal with the UFC. And so I think there are a lot of kinks to be worked out. You know, the Ultimate Fighter didn't really sure. go on so well. Um, it was on a Friday night where their demographic is out partying and not out. <laughs> so I think overall, I think, you know, with boxing, you know, they create a lot of new stars. Mm-hmm. I think... You start with Austin Trout. I mean, we knew about him prior to this year, but in terms mm-hmm. of a national audience, I think he came on strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to mention, you know, Sergio Martinez and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. That was a huge fight. Canelo <laughs> Alvarez. Um, you were talking about Jorge the viewership in Mexico and in America for both those fights yeah. going on at the exact same time. They both did very well. So yeah. I think, as we'll talk about later, I think boxing really had a huge resurgence in moving on past just talking about Manny Pacquiao for the other junior. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about locally the fight of the year Jorge. you were pretty much at all these events um can you pin down what were the highlights that stood out to you when you were watching these fights locally in new mexico locally when it comes to mixed martial arts uh, i'm just surprised by how like, well equipped a lot of these guys are even in the amateur level you know you used to go into boxing shows where guys aren't as technical so those turn out to be slugfest the mma shows tend to be a little more technical because you have a lot of these guys growing up you know since they were kids five six years old learning karate, learning taekwondo, or even learning wrestling. So that's what impressed me the most. There are two fights that stand out with boxing and MMA. One was in Gallup. It was an amateur show, the MMA Summer Showdown, between Armando Rivas, who's from El Paso, uh, comes out of a gym called Bushido. Bushido MMA folks, they went 26-2 and two this wow. year. Incredible. So they're making their name known locally and regionally. And it's just time before they blow up nationally. How many pros do they have? They have, I think they have a handful of pros. They only okay. have six pros. A small gym, only about 14 guys. Okay. But still, I mean, to go 26-2 and two regionally is, is, is incredible. Um, he was in a fight in a year with uh, Daniel Martinez, who actually come at, came out of LA uh, boxing. And you know, it was pretty interesting to see that, but it was a very good fight. Boxing, Tony Valdez versus uh, Raymond Montes, too. It was on the Holly Home, Diana Prazic card. Incredible fight mm-hmm. between the two guys. Both guys showed heart. Uh, Raymond Montes, you know, the fight was stopped for him. He was taken to the hospital, but thank goodness he's good. Ultimately, he ended up retiring from the sport after he was hospitalized. So those are the two fights that stand out more than any other here locally, I think. Okay. Um, let's talk about the fighter of the year. Um, I guess in this category with New Mexico fighter of the year, um, you can kind of categorize them two ways. Either they are born in New Mexico mm-hmm. or they train predominantly in New Mexico yeah. and really rep the 505. And I think with all these nominees, they do that. And let's talk about the nominees. Uh, first is John Jones, Austin Trout, Holly Holm, and John Dotson. Is there anybody else you think I left off that list? Um, I think that's 
You know, pretty much pretty good. I mean, maybe on a regional level, uh, not so much nationally. Uh, Brenda Gonzalez, who won the King of the Cage Junior Flyweight title, she went 3-0 and this year. She was another pretty good one. But standout nationally, I think these, these, these are the main four. Okay. Um, who are you guys' thoughts on who should win this category? Um, Austin Trout pretty much had two big-time victories, especially the one over Miguel Cotto. That was on uh, national television on Showtime. That got the most attention. That got the uh, primetime special yeah. that you were in, Jorge. Um, <laughs> so uh, my pick is Austin Trout for this category. Do you think, you know, Holly Holm, does she stack up with Austin? I mean, it's kind of different because Trout gets a national exposure. She doesn't. Um, John Dawson's getting the national. He's getting a title shot on Fox National mm. TV. So he could be a winner for next, this coming year, 2013. Uh, do you see anybody else to throw in Trout? Anything? I think I, John Jones had one heck of a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, he destroyed everyone that he fought against. And even when he was tested, you know, he almost got his arm broken off. Let's mm -hmm. not forget that. And sure. he, you know, he flew with, you know, with, I mean, he went with flying colors. But when it comes to Austin Trout, to basically come from obscurity, he defeated a very good uh, Devin Rodriguez and then upset uh, Miguel Cotto in his hometown. Mm -hmm. So... I think it might have to be two separate categories with MMA being John Jones and then Austin Trout, but I think we're going to give it I mean, to Austin Trout. I completely agree. How about you, Will? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with as well with Austin Trout. I mean, he definitely, with the victory over Miguel Cotto, we know that Miguel Cotto is going to be a future Hall of Famer. So that's a big name that Austin Trout gets to place on his resume. And like Jorge mentioned, he beat him in Madison Square Garden. Um, so he dealt with the pressure well. Um, and I was just in, impressed with him. I think he has a bright future, and I think that he represents New Mexico very well. So I'm looking forward to see what he's going to be able to do this year. Let's hope Canelo takes that fight. I don't, oh, think, I don't yeah. think they are. That's oh, true. Man, I don't yeah. think they are. Yeah, there's an article on uh, that left hook, and there's a lot of speculation that that fight won't happen. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's talk about our first major category, uh, MMA KO of the year, knockout of the year. Um, there are some brutal knockouts. Um, you got to think of... Jose Aldo versus uh, Chad Mendez, where Aldo goes into the crowd and there's a huge riot basically in the stadium in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta go with Anthony Pettis, Joe Lozon from USC Japan. That, that was pretty solid. One. You gotta go um, with Edson Barbosa versus Terry Adam. That's an incredible knockout. That's my knockout of the year. This is a wheel kick to me. It's one of the greatest knockouts in the history of the UFC. Um, rivals to Showtime kick with Anthony Pettis a couple of years mm -hmm. back. Um, do you have any other nominees you think? I don't think so. I think it's for the most part. Uh, I think Cub Swanson had a pretty good knockout as well. Uh, that, who was it that he fought? I can't remember who he actually fought. It was two fights ago. He yeah. actually had an incredible knockout. Um, Eric Perez, who, uh, you know, he set a record for the bantamweight knockout. Right. You know, the guy wasn't completely out, but he came too. That's true. Afterward. That was another pretty good one. But I think mine is the Jose Aldo, um, just because of the emotion he showed. And, you know, he didn't stay in the octagon to celebrate. This guy ran out to his fans who carried him, you know, and it was just, it was, it was amazing. It, it was, was like almost a soccer fight. atmosphere feeling mixed with college basketball. It was unbelievable. And even little pro wrestling, if you think it about was. it. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's, that's my favorite one, mm -hmm. just for the sheer entertainment value, I think. Um, let's get the boxing KO of the year. Um, lots of knockouts there. Um, of course, you got to go with Juan Manuel Marquez. With the, just like a massive KO or just a poser follow. -up. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. Ray Sanchez and Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> KO and Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. You're gonna see the two older gentlemen. They look like you know those two older guys in the set mm -hmm. with the, the uh, Muppets. You know they're, they're the commentators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot what their names are, but they look just like those guys. Yeah. But that was definitely a huge knockout. I think mean, that's my knockout of the year. I um, also had Randall Bailey with the KO over Mike Jones. And it was a comeback. That might be mm -hmm. comeback of the year also. Um, Miguel Kessler with a KO over Alan Green, um, Garrett Wilson with his KO over Andres Taylor. Anything else that stands out for you guys, like boxing knockout of the year? Mm. Gary Russell Jr., I can't wait to see this guy, but he, 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 had, he had a great knockout too. Though. But I will say this, I uh, want to remove that Kessler versus Alan Green, because okay. I just like... Why well, is that? Yeah, because, <laughs> you you know, yeah, Green. Alan Green, I just like, you know, it's, for me, like, the knockout of the year is just like a, a phenomenal knockout of somebody yeah. that actually has a chance of knocking you out, a competitive fight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Green didn't really stand, stand a chance, but... No. <laughs> he actually didn't. I'll give you that. Let me tell you what I think. The one of the year, I think, it's Juan Manuel Marquez over Manny Pacquiao. My personal favorite of the one is... Uh, uh, Shinsuke um, Yamanaka against Thomas Rojas. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty good fight in Japan. And, you know, Rojas was a gritty fighter, and he was in there to bang. 
And the way Yam Yamanaka knocked him out with this right hook, he basically just folded like an accordion and mm -hmm. he was out. So whenever you see a KO like that where someone's body just does not respond, that's you know just incredible and phenomenal. And we saw that with Manny Pacquiao as well. But I think based off of the level of the two fighters and just, uh, I guess, the respect that both fighters have as one of the greatest. Because I brought it up before and I had asked you, Will, do you think Juan Manuel Marquez is top 30 all time? This was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And he was in... in for me, just because I think he, he was robbed in the Chris John fight and the Mayweather fight are the only two clear ones he's ever lost, I think. Right. So, but just based off of how good they are, these guys are, you know, argue with me, all right, maybe they're both top 50 all time, mm -hmm. both guys. So I think that's why that knockout stands out more than the other ones. I'm going to have to completely agree yeah. with the Marquez versus Pacquiao. I mean, first of all, I'm not going to make it any secret. I was wrong. I was not for this fight. After three, <laughs> I, I, had, I had seen enough. <laughs> um, and I really, yeah. I said, if they're going to do it for the fourth time, they really need to go all out, guns blazing. And that they did. And what I really appreciated about this fight was Juan Manuel Marquez. He's, you know, a lot of people debated that he's got robbed in all of their previous fights. And this time he came in for the knockout. And there was just the way that it happened, one second left. Yeah, One second exactly, left, yeah. and he stayed focused for every second of every round, uh, and you can see the payoff. People were shocked. My jaw was to the floor as we saw Manny Pacquiao laying there lifeless, the pound-for-pound -pound king. Uh, he took the title off of him, and now Marcus is definitely in that in that, in that that top 50. Yeah. And he was losing the fight. He was, he was losing, he was the, losing fight. the fight. He, he was, was down by fight. three. Some people had him down every round, with the exception of the one where he knocked Manny down. Don't call when, it a comeback, man. When he knocked <laughs> Manny down... And, you know, it was the second, third round. I can't remember right now. Yeah, but, third. I mean, that just surprised you. Like, oh, my God, he finally got He's to going him. somewhere. Something's going to happen. Yep. And that's what was incredible about that fight. It also so. created a bunch of Instagram pictures. It did. <laughs> 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 Over the rest of the The many well. Pacquiao memes came out. Yes, so. yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Um, let's shift to MMA fight of the year. Mm. Um, and certainly 2012, I think, is going to get kind of overshadowed just because of all the injuries. Um, just of all kind of the bad stuff that happened because of a lot of stars that we did not mm -hmm. were able to see in 2012. But there were a lot of good fights. Um, I know I'm on the women's MMA bandwagon there, but I got to <laughs> say, the fight between Misha Tate and Julie Kennedy was incredible. I mean, you had great stand-up. You had sweeps on the ground. It was super dramatic. It was easily it the was. best Julie Kennedy we've ever seen um, training at a Jackson camp. Um, she usually gets known for fighting that first fight with Gina Carano, but Julie mm -hmm. Ketsy is a talented fighter mm -hmm. and a talented commentator. She's going to be doing her thing tonight on Invicta FC. So I think for me, that's my fight of the year. Um, don't forget, there's also Sarah Kaufman, Alexis Davis. That was also Another female an incredible fighter. fight. Mm -hmm. um, don't forget about uh, John Fitch, Eric Silva. Um, it's the same card of Anderson Silva, um, Stefan Bonner. Is a card that really no one saw because no one wanted to see. Actually, I take that back. They actually did pretty decently. It was the pay per view buys, but it was a card people weren't looking forward to. But Eric Silva like, really had John Fitch dead to rights. He survived, and John Fitch gets the victory. Mm -hmm. um, let's not forget about Jimmy Barton or Joe Lozon. That's mm -hmm. on some people's fight of the year list. Um, really dramatic fight. Um, Dustin Poirier versus the Korean Zombie. That was a great one. Uh, excellent that was a very fight. good one. Um, Diego Sanchez, Jake Ellenberger. You know, Diego Sanchez is money for fight of the year. Almost, almost mm -hmm. came back in that fight. Mm -hmm. He was losing. And uh, Nate Marquardt, Taiwan Willie, in which mm -hmm. Nate Marquardt came back to greatness. He was yeah. pretty much disgraced because of what happened a couple of years ago. I'm not no showing sure yeah. the UFC event. But he comes back, KOs Taiwan Willie, mm -hmm. and um, he was Hinn undefeated at the yeah. time, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 really hot. Yeah. Um, don't forget about Ben Henderson and Frankie Edgar. Yeah, that was good. Um, both those fights were good. Um, I, I still believe that Frankie Edgar got robbed. I think a lot of people are with me on that. But anyway, I think that's still a great fight. So any any other fight that catches your eye that's not on this list? I don't think so. My right. my favorite one, and I think the best one, is the Misha Tate versus Julie Kedzie. Just the skill that both women displayed and the heart that they displayed in that fight. Just because you know Julie Kedzie is a name. She's never reached the superstar. I mean, kind of is. I mean, she's kind of doing it now, despite not being a champion, I mean, for what, sh I think it was Sherdog that voted her, like, best, uh, you know, best role model, mm -hmm. and also, I mean, she was in the fight of the year, and now she's basically, her and Gina Carano helped, I guess, can you say they kind of helped launch women's MMA sure. to the mainstream? Mm -hmm. So, just with all of that in that fight, that that's probably my favorite one, and I think I'd have to vote for that one. I was a big fan of that Diego Sanchez one as well, just because he almost made that comeback, and it was very entertaining, and it was the first, uh, UFC on Fuel TV, so it was a great introduction to, I guess, the the Fuel TV uh, campaign, if mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. I, I kind of love the dramatics, so I'm going to go a different route here. 
Uh, first one, you know, the Nate Marquette, as we were mentioning, you know, he, he made it a comeback. And it's always so interesting when you got a guy that's been written off to go against a guy that's undefeated. <laughs> and it was just, it was, it, that fight just looked painful. That's one of the ones that I just remember, and I felt bad for Woodley. He never gave up, but the, in the way that it ended, it was entertaining throughout the whole fight. So I was uh, really intrigued by that. Another one that I would have to go with was the Henderson and, and Edgar. I thought that with that type of fight, it was a big risk for both fighters, and, yeah. their, and their skill levels were so evenly matched. It was just back and forth, and I could see, you know, I could see how you can make your argument for that. But, you know, regardless of the outcome, it was entertaining. It was, and, sure. and, and it was a it was an even match fight. So you know, I'm, but it's it's hard to go between those two. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go off base. I like the way that it ended with the Marquette and the and the Woodley. Now I know all around that's pro probably not the most <laughs> pragmatic decision, but that's what entertained me the most. Well, it could be um, for this overall career comeback of the year for Marquette. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's pretty much written off. Um, a couple of fights also uh, in terms of kind of comebacks. Tim Bosch over Yushin Okami. Mm -hmm. That was just losing that fight. Mm -hmm. Bosch comes back. Also, Against a legend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, let's not forget about this past weekend, a couple of weeks and weekends ago, with um, Joe Lozon and Jim Miller. That was incredible an fight. fight. Mm -hmm. With uh, Joe Lozon's pulling off the uh, Mortal Combat look there with the blood, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, just a, I thought an incredible fight, and with Lozon almost definitely getting was. a victory in the third round. Mm -hmm. So definitely some good highlights there. Um, let's shift to boxing fight of the year. Um, I think it was a standout for, of course, boxing with Rising Stars, but also with fights of the year. Um, I want to kind of point to with Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Miguel Cotto. And I know this is not my fight of the year, but I think this is a perfect demonstration of really Mayweather being able to put on an exciting bout, something that he's he put his chin on the line, I think. He's more mm -hmm. exciting, yeah. mm -hmm. more fan-friendly. I think that should be noted there. Um, and also, it really rise, rose Miguel Cotto as a serious contender, too, taking kind of Mayweather to deep water there. Mm -hmm. And then Austin Shaw beating Miguel Cotto kind of, it's a nice rub, you know, mm -hmm. kind of with two fights there. Yeah. But um, really interesting with uh, Mike Alvarado on this list twice. Mm -hmm. uh, first yeah. with his win over Mar Mauricio yeah. Herrera. Yeah. That was a dramatic fight. And then him losing to Brandon Rios in a fight that I think everybody thought he was going to win. Um, but he loses to Brandon Rios uh, in, in round seven. Um, also, Alana Salido, uh, Juan Manuel Lopez, and Robert DeGos Guerrero, your boy, you're really high at him, yeah. uh, beating Andre uh, Berto. Mm -hmm. um, there's any other fights on this list um, that we missed before we kind of... Uh, I think just a couple, because just because of the boxing KO of the year, um, you know, that Shinsuke Yamanaka and Thomas Rojas, that was a pretty damn good fight. Uh, and I think that might be it. I mean, we might be missing a couple, but when it comes to fights that were broadcasted and that the mainstream saw, I mean, I think we're pretty... Pretty well on on this one. The Robert Guerrero versus Andre Berto, I think, was a solid fight. I mean, I don't know if it should be one of the top, I guess, five, mm -hmm. but it was a very solid fight. And I feel kind of feel the same about the Mayweather and a uh, and Cotto fight. Uh, to me, the two that stand out, uh, the, obviously, the Brandon Rios and Mike Alvarado, just because everyone was hyped for it and everyone mm -hmm. knew, you know what? Mm -hmm. You better watch this. Mm -hmm. You better watch this. There was people calling friends that don't watch it. He's like, hey, these guys are going to bang. Uh, Orlando Salido versus Juan Manuel Lopez. Salido went back to Puerto Rico mm -hmm. to defend the title that he had taken from Juan Manuel, Lomo, Juan Manuel Lopez the first time. And Juan Manuel Lopez even dropped Alonso Salido early mm -hmm. in that fight. Mm -hmm. And then it came to the 10th. And then, you know, it followed by all the drama where Juan Manuel Lopez was suspended for saying that the ref was a gambler and right. was yeah, against yeah, him yeah. for supposedly an early Famous stoppage. Character. It was actually a pretty good stoppage. He right. may have saved his life. Uh, but to me, Brandon Rios, Mike Alvarado was a pretty good one. And uh, there's some people that have that Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marcus. I it was entertaining, but it ended too early. Manny Pacquiao, yeah, you know, did take care of that. So for me, it's a Brandon Rios, Mike Alvarado fight. Right. Uh, all those fights I loved, but you know, it, I'm really going back and forth between the Rios and Alvarado and the Salido and, and then Juan. Yes, yeah, the Mon Juan Manuel Lopez mm -hmm. too. Um, just for the simple fact, I mean, I almost want to break up the categories in terms of best technical fights, slug fest, <laughs> things like that. But I think I'm going to have to go with Salido and, and Lopez, too, just for the simple fact of the fashion that it brought. I mean, we had knockdowns. We had uh, chances where either fighter could be victorious. And just the fact that Salido went into Puerto Rico to do this. I mean, all the drama was there. And, it, and both guys showed tremendous heart. And, and, you know, we got 10 rounds out of this. So, I mean, I'm going to have to go with that one for the fight of the year. It's the most memorable. It was even dramatic even after the fight had ended. As you, <laughs> as you mentioned, the dramatics continued um, with Lopez slurring the referee. 
But it, it was a hard decision, but I just want to note that it was very close between Rios and Alvarado. Mm -hmm. And I, I really appreciated what those guys did in terms of coming in the ring. We knew that it was going to be a firework type of fight. That's what they delivered. I wish they would have went a little longer. And the reason that I didn't choose that is I know that the refs, you know, they don't want to live with regrets. But I think that the type of fighter that Alvarado was, he should have given him the benefit of the doubt to maybe at least give him a stand and yeah. A count and have some of that great action continue. Mm -hmm. Uh, and since it didn't, I can't give it the fight of the year. I'm going with Toledo and Lopez. Right, cool. um, I got to go with Rios Alvarado. I was like the dramatic points in that fight, mm -hmm. a comeback victory. Not to mention that Brandon Rios was struggling with his weight. That was an issue. So I, I really enjoyed that fight. But certainly, all these fights are worthy. Um, Let's go to... Was, we just got a tweet that oh, um, okay. the Sergio Martinez, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. I'd have to disagree. I, yeah, just, just because it was that. so one-sided. I agree with you. It was right. so one-sided, yeah, and it only got entertaining in the last yep. two rounds. Yeah, the last two rounds. I give him for that. But, you know, yep. he, he, he he didn't pull off with his his father. The most drama. Yeah. The most yeah. drama. Yeah. That and the Orlando yeah. Salido, yeah. Juan Manuel yeah. Lopez, I yeah. think. But, yeah. Good last two rounds, but not yeah. for a whole fight. No. Um, let's shift to... MMA Fire of the Year, and before we get to that category, I'm, as Jorge said, you can tweet us at, at the Low Blow, and we're also on Facebook through Fake Low Blow Podcast. Um, we're available there also through email through lowblow505 at gmail.com. That's through today and through all our podcasts. We're always interactive. If you have any questions, complaints, you think we're ridiculous and saying, please let us know. If you like any kind of feedback. So, MMA Fighter of the Year. Now, this is gonna, it's kind of a controversial category. Um, because I think for most people's list, for the first time in my recollection, is a woman on here. Yeah. I'm not sure if Sa uh, Cyborg Santos was on a lot of people's list when she was having her run. A couple of years ago, yeah. For sure, Ronda Rousey's on everybody's list. Mm -hmm. um, it's really come down to Ronda Rousey, John Jones, Benson Henderson, uh, Nate Diaz, someone, and Daniel Cormier. Um, I think he had to get Cain Velasquez to that list, winning mm -hmm. the heavyweight title yeah, this that's, past that's a couple of weekends ago. Um, I think my MMA fighter of the year has to be Ronda Rousey. Um, I think even though you could say her competition is limited, but she faced the top two women in her, in her weight class. She beat them easily, and not to mention the exposure she got to the sport. I mean, she's going on talk shows that no one's ever seen before. Mm. Um, I think what, what hurts her in a lot of people's eyes, she's only fought twice. And I think a lot of times yeah. you want to fight three times in MMA to kind of earn true. that gold standard. Like John Jones said, we fought four times. I mean, that's kind of the gold standard. In terms of fighter of the year, mm -hmm. but um, in my opinion, I gotta go with Ronda Rousey. I just think she's really talented. Mm. Well, to me, I think she might be third on this list for me. Uh, I got John Jones number one just because of his dominance. He continues mm -hmm. to dominate the sport. There's no one that has been able to touch him mm -hmm. besides Vitor Belfort, almost breaking his arm. And he, you know, and he was injured after that, so you know how bad it actually was. Daniel Cormier to me is number two. He was able to take you know the tournament and just. You know, stand out at, in strike force as one of the better fighters, and then probably Ronda Rousey. It might be a tie between them two for a second, but uh, I'd have to go with John Jones for this category just because of the continued dominance that he actually has. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna have to go with John Jones as well because just as you said, you know, there's just no competition, and, but he's still willing to make those fights. He's still fighting frequently enough to be in the scene. He's not just taking like one fight and just living off the hype from the past. He's backing it up, and he's just so. And it, what I hope is that happens to Jones is that they don't, you know, start to say like, you know, he never really fought anybody mm -hmm. because you know that kind of happened with Roy Jones. His his skills <laughs> yeah, were so exactly. superb. They they began to hit on him. The two. Well, so well, if he head that way, I mean, look yeah. at Vitor Belfort, late replacement, Chael Sonnen. A lot of people are against that fight, mm -hmm. and it could be, you know, John Jones is kind of ducking mm -hmm. a tougher competition. It could, you know, it could be spun that he's the UFC's kind of golden boy. Now, I mean, now there's a golden girl running Rousey, but now. Certainly, he's in the top five of investments, and now they kind of want to protect him. So, mm -hmm. Joe Sonnen's a fight that he talks a lot, brings a lot of attention, but it's a fight that John Jones he, he can win easily. Yeah, so I completely agree. But John Jones for me, so you're going Rousey. I am. Um, I just like the attention. I just think, you know, she single-handedly got women into the UFC. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big deal. Um, I agree with John Jones. I mean, I mean, Rashad Evans wasn't really that impressive of a victory, in my opinion, mm -hmm. even though they were teammates. Um, and then Vitor Belfort, I mean, he almost got armbarred. Um, that's a fight he should have won fairly easily. Yeah. But Also, I, I went with Jones, too, just because of his versatility for the sport. I think that, you know, when it comes to a fighter uh, of that caliber, you know, if you don't do the stand-up, if you're on the ground, yeah. you're in trouble. Sure. Uh, with Rousey, 
I would like to see more versatility from her. I, I mean, she knows she's going to go for that arm bar. Yeah. Hey, it works, you know. It's like Larry Bird with the with the three point. It works, but uh, you know exactly, we like yeah. want to see some versatility though. Dunk the ball, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, you guys like argue this category. I'll be back. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah, we're technical uh, difficulty. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind of running low on battery power. But um, I, let's get into a boxer of the year. Yeah. Um, I kind of conflicted about this category because even though it was a standout year in boxing, right. I'm looking at these guys nominated for this category mm -hmm. and I don't see any major wins. Am I wrong about that in terms of, I mean, they had solid years. I mean, they had, you know, you take a look at the nominees, Danny Garcia, Donito Donner, Sergio Martinez, and I put Austin Trout on here. Right. To me, in terms of, you know, these fighters, like Austin Trout had the biggest victory. He did. On his list. He did. And he really broke out into a major pay-per-view, could be a pay-per-view star right. on here. And I think, certainly, I think Donito Donner, a lot of people are Pegging him as the next Manny Pacquiao, yeah. whether it's fair or not. Yeah. Um, with Sergio Martinez, certainly, you know his age is a factor. Um, he did have the win over Luis Victor Chavez Jr. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, and I agree with you, it was a one-sided bout until the last parts of that fight. Right. Um, I just, I don't know. And there's, of course, there's Danny Garcia too. Right. Um, I, I want to get your opinion on: Do you think it matters on quality victories or on consistency? Um, you know, if you go three and zero, four and zero, is that better than just having one big standout win? That yeah. that, that is a great uh, question. I I think I'm gonna have to go with more. I lead, I think both are important factors, but I'm gonna have to lead, lean more towards the quality of the opponent. That's what that's what really stands out to me. But I do believe that consistency is just as important. You know, I really in in terms of these guys getting these type of titles, you know, only fighting like maybe once or twice a year, it's kind of hard to give it to them. But let's go down some of the list. Sure. Um, Danny Garcia. I think that, uh, you know, he's a rough and tough fighter from Phil from Philadelphia. I don't really give him that much props in terms of beating, uh, you know, older Eric Morales. Um, although, you know, Eric Morales is one of my favorite all-time Mexican fighters. But, you know, he was aging. But, you know, when he did that against Amir Khan, <laughs> wow. Now, that's what I'm talking about. You know, two young up-and-comers. He, you know, he, he took the fight. He, he did it beautifully. And... That was good. So that was like one for him right there. No, Nino Donair. Now this goes back to your question. This is, I, this is why I'm going with Donair, and I'm telling okay. you right now because I think that he encompassed both of those uh, qualities that we were talking about. One would be the quality, and then the consistency. Um, some of the fights weren't as entertaining, but I think that every opponent that he had was definitely a threat in the boxing world. Even Jorge Arce? Even Jorge Arce. Okay. I was uh, wrong in the trilogy. Uh, Jorge, you know, <laughs> he helped me out with that. But uh, we've seen Jorge Arce. I mean, we, we talked about that. I think this guy's going to be definitely a, a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, when you actually saw them sides up in the ring, you're like, you know what? It just shows how good Nonito Donero really is. And just the fact that he was willing to fight four times. Um, against good fighters uh, did it for me in the way that he, he and he knocked him out I mean that's that's I don't, I don't think you could get too much better than that I, I would like to see some of the opponents be a little bit more easily matched but it, it stems back to what we were just talking about with John Jones the guy's just he's he's not just good I think that he's great mm -hmm. um, Sergio Martinez you can't give it to him for Matthew Macklin I mean with that, <laughs> that that goes back in terms of, of the quality of the fighter I mean Macklin was a tough fighter but seriously no um, and in terms of uh, Chavez Jr., it, you know, I was kind of disappointed in Chavez Jr. Remember the controversy, you know, you, you know, with him smoking the marijuana. Sure. He had that factored in there. And then, like, the fight, I just thought that it was going to be more competitive. I give Martino's, Martinez props for he was able to hold on and not become a Meldrick Taylor. Um, but, you know, fighter of the year, no. Um, and then who else did we have? We had, did we have anybody else? I think I put Austin Trout. As Austin well. Trout. Austin Trout, you know, he, he had, he had one really significant fight against Miguel Cotto. We've already kind of discussed this, but in terms of quality and consistency, I'm going with Nito Donier for the fight. And, of the uh, year. and I completely agree. One other guy that I think we might put a, uh, on here is another Philippine uh, American say, sensation and Brian Valoria. This guy had mm -hmm. a stellar year mm -hmm. and he, he was even involved in one of the fights of the year. Um, on Wealth TV out of all channels. This channel just launched and it had probably two of the top ten fights of the year, wow. which, is, which is incredible. But uh, when it comes to Danny Garcia, as you mentioned, Eric Morales is old. He's over the hill. He's tested positive. How many times for, uh, you know, performing the answer yeah. the last fight? But Nonito Donaire, he fought champions. He w went out there and now we hope he fights, you know, Abner Modest. Yep. Hopefully That's that fight ends up, uh, ends up going down. 
I know there were two competing organizations with Golden Boy and Top Rank, mm -hmm. but that, if he wins that, that'll solidify him as a number one pound for pound, no matter what Mayweather uh, does, I think. Mm -hmm. Unless Mayweather, of course, fights, I mean, if he beats Robert Guerrero handedly, because yeah. Robert Guerrero is a very dangerous fighter. Let's not forget about Robert Guerrero. He had an incredible he, year He had well. an incredible year as well. Yeah, he, he did as well. But just like you said, like it's that, it's that quality, quality and consistency. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? That's good. I'm glad you mentioned that Mayweather too because you also mentioned, Jay, you know, you were glad that boxing had went beyond Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao for the casual fans. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was imperative. Um, but you know what? That's the thing with Mayweather. Quality is really good. But he's only fighting like yeah. once or twice a year. You know, I prefer the fighters. At least, give me at least three. Yeah, three, yeah, three, yeah, three quality fights. And and another one, just basically, I guess not based off of competition too much, but based off performance, is Adrian Broner. Oh man, yeah, I, I was definitely thinking. I was thinking that too, uh, but just the sideshow, I had to eliminate him for that. I'll be more talented. Uh, honestly, that was not, good. I, were you not a big fan of the Prince and his antics that he had, or you know, were you were you happy when Barrera kicked his butt? Yeah, I, I was happy when Barrera kicked his butt because every because <laughs> this is what happens in terms of theatrics and entertainment. You know, like people love to hate certain individuals like that, so it brought it put butts in the seats. But what I liked about what Barrera did to the Prince was like, look. Barrera was a serious boxer. <laughs> you know, the Prince, he was flash. He had a decent punch, but he, he, he wasn't really skilled. Yeah. He wasn't an elite fighter. And this showed, when you got that type of foolishness and you bring it against an elite fighter, yeah. that's what happens. Get him out of there. Broner, however, is an elite fighter, but <laughs> his, his, his theatrics <laughs> are not good. So it's, it, it, it's, it's just the opposite. Um, but, you know, he had uh, that fight against DeMarco. I, um, I almost had him up there because I was just extremely surprised of how one-dimensional that fight was. I really thought it was going to be a lot more back and forth. Yeah. So, um, but just that's just one fight, though. So you're not combing his hair anytime? No, 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 no. He won't get any brushes from me. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I'll keep watching him. So I think Nonita Donaire and then, you know, I guess Brian Valoria and then Robert Guerrero for me follow mm -hmm. suit from there. Yeah, I gotta agree with you. I think only took in there had a standout year. I just, I just have a problem with kind of the quality of competition. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't, didn't see that standout big time win. Besides sure. It's Austin Trout mm -hmm. over Miguel Cotto. Um, let's go to a new category that we're introducing this year, Sport of the Year. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we all agree, we, we want peace and harmony between yeah. the, the trinity of sport. Not only does <laughs> it mix martial arts and boxing, but kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, um, Mm -hmm. amateur wrestling so on but i think it's fair to pin the sports against each other in terms of which sport had the better year this is the first mm -hmm. time we're doing this mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. in years past i don't know if you guys would be with me or not i think the sport of mixed martial arts always had an edge that's because not only because of the ufc but because of other organizations you take elite xc getting on mm -hmm. national tv first you take you know um even you go 2007 you know that was a good, good year for pride um Really, the sport has really evolved, you know, ever since the Golden Age in 2005, um, where we really didn't really see that progress, I don't think, in my mind, in boxing on a national sure. level. But now, this year, we saw, you know, big numbers a, on network TV for boxing. We saw the first time for, um, I think, Leo Santa Cruz Leo Santa on Cruz. CBS. Mm -hmm. We saw the NBC sports cards. I think there was a bunch. I'm not sure the number, how many boxing cards we saw. On NBC Sports. I think it, well, on NBC Sports, what it was previously versus, I think we had a good four or five okay. on there, and then we had one on actual NBC Network, which did, which did really well it did. in comparison to another college basketball game mm -hmm. that was on at the same time. So you'll see more of that, and I love it. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see that. And not only that, but a lot more, I was mentioned earlier, you know, moving the sport towards just your main two guys with Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather, mm -hmm. they always get the attention. Now we're seeing guys that not only can be stars, can also draw money. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that, the proof's in the pudding. Mm -hmm. Whereas MMA, you know, things are out of their control with the injuries. Mm -hmm. um, Bellator, like we said before, took a year off. Asia's kind of fallen off in yeah. terms of being relevant. There's really only one FC. Um, with this, you know, the suspension with Alice over and Nick Diaz, this seems with the sport of boxing, other than really the PED scandal, it was a standout year. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the sport of boxing. As in the ass sport of the year. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I, I call it like I see it. I call it like I see it. I mean, uh, I may mean, lean one way, but I, you know, it, the proof's in the pudding. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. the sport of boxing is set, I think really both sports is set to have a really spectacular year. And mm -hmm. I think this category next year, when we look back, is going to be really hard to pick from if everything right. pans out. I, I agree. Right. Especially with the launch of women's MMA with yeah. the UFC, because I think. Because boxing despite, doesn't have that. Yeah, boxing <laughs> does not have that. <laughs> 
So when it did come to that specifically, you know, this was the this was the year. If we go back in history, 50 years from now, well, what year did women's MMA was just put on the map? And I think it was this year, despite the fact that it's not in the UFC yet, because you had so many organizations and promotions that were willing to put them on there, and Invicta, you know, helped it out a lot it did. by mm -hmm. putting stellar fights and you know stellar competition. So when it comes to that, I think women's MMA helped, I guess, MMA in general just a little bit more, or else mm -hmm. it would have been. A bad year with the fallout of injuries, mm -hmm. sure. with the fallout of strike force, mm -hmm. yeah. and then I said you mentioned Bellator not being as active as a you know as they previously were, but I'd have to go with boxing as well just because of the amount of fights that they put on, but the robberies continue to hurt the sport. That's true. Yeah, good point. Yeah, the politics are always involved, and you know in the past you know with mixed martial arts that's one thing that I always admired was the actual matchups. It just makes sense, and they were happening. You know, in terms of boxing, some of the politics, you know, still disappointing that we never got to see that Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao mm -hmm. fight. Everybody was just in disbelief. It made so much sense. It doesn't hold the same value now. But in terms of one thing I saw the boxing happen this year is they did make better matchups. And, and, you know, I'll repeatedly say, want to reiterate, you know, it has moved beyond just the Pacquiao and the Mayweather for the casual fans. So I think a lot of superstars emerged this year, and we got really great and decent fights. We did have a couple setbacks with the performance enhancers. Fights were canceled, but we had some rough and tough fights, and we got some, you know, we're, I think we're a little bit more optimistic going into the year 2013. I think that the, you know, the old guard is, is fading away, and here comes the new guard of some new superstars. So um, I'm always with that, and I was just really pleased with the, with the outcome of the matchups. I mean, the, the fights mattered this year in the sports of boxing, and I think, you know, even you, you know, you, you were entertained a lot more this year in boxing, I yes. think, than you've ever been. You were following it as well. well. I think it was presented, and I'm not going to cut you off. No, no. I just think it was presented in more of a way that we were somebody getting into it can understand mm -hmm. what's happening, because I think the problem is, compared to MMA and boxing, when you introduce somebody who's not really familiar with the sport, with the sweet science, is that there's all these belts, and there's not, you can't really keep up with what's happening. Right. So you see a fighter that you like, on Showtime, you might not see him on Showtime. Mm -hmm. time. He might yeah. be signed to HBO. He might be on ESPN too. Mm -hmm. Whereas a UFC or even any MMA organization, it can be any name you give it. You see the same list of guys every single time. Like mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. the card you see, you can see names come up every single time. Yeah. And in boxing, it's just really kind of hard to get a grasp unless you follow it hardcore. Mm -hmm. like you put some effort into trying to following the stars. I think this year is kind of the first time. It was a little bit easier to follow. Yeah, and then here locally, I mean, you had a lot of people asking. Uh, I guess because of the rise of Austin Trout, mm -hmm. you had a lot of people asking, "Well, who's the champion in his in his weight class?" And you could name up to six guys who yeah. technically had a piece or a full mm -hmm. piece of the of the title. He's like, "Well, I mean, he has a WBA title, but Floyd Mayweather has the full rights today." It's like, yeah. "Oh, why are there so many?" And I think that's what UFC does a good job: one belt per weight class. If there's an interim champion, you, they're going to face each other within a year. Right. As opposed to boxing, where you can delay that for a good two years before those two guys fight. But also, when it comes to boxing, it developed, I guess, three pretty good stars. Um, in Nonito Donaire this year a little bit more. And Nonito Donaire, we knew about him you know, past yeah. four years. But he, he stood out this year above everyone else. So I guess we can cancel him out. But Canelo Alvarez, mm -hmm. so I fight the fact he's not facing the competition he should be. Mm -hmm. I think just the name and... You know, his talent, he might not be the most technical guy, but he's up there. Adrian Broner and Robert Guerrero, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's three different types of guys, too, that they can actually market. One guy's very religious, the other guy is very charismatic, mm -hmm. and then in Canelo, mm -hmm. you just got very humble guy. Right. <laughs> and I really like the point that you brought up about the belts. That's one thing I do like about mixed martial arts better. Just give me one champ. I don't need all these different type of belts. And that's what I think it's interesting to see now that they've done away with strike force because that was some of my concern too. It was like, okay, you were, you, you the heavyweight champ of yeah. strike force, heavyweight champ of the UFC, now that's going on. So now we get to see who's the real undisputed champ. And I wish they would eliminate some of those belts in, in, in boxing because, you know, it is it is hard and difficult, you know, Who's the world's weight champion of the world? Well, you got him, him, <laughs> him, him, and you know what I mean? Just give me one name. You know what HBO does? You have the title holders, and it's usually three guys. And it's usually three guys, and they yeah. only put the three main guys. And that's why the pound for pound doesn't matter as much in MMA, because mm -hmm. you have the guys with the belts. Yeah. And in boxing, that's Speak why it, it means so much. Yep. Like, the pound for pound list is, it's, you know, it's like the Ten, ten Commandments, yeah. man. It's... Mm -hmm. People go by it. Creme de la creme. And, it, and everyone just has a different interpretation mm -hmm. of it. But for the most part, everyone is kind of in the same boat when it does come to it. So mm -hmm. I think that's why, as boxing aficionados, we're willing <laughs> to kind of neglect the number of belts that sure. are with each weight class. Um, 
in terms of predictions for 2013, I think we're I think we're all pretty much optimistic for the new year. Mm -hmm. um, starting tonight, there's Invicta. Mm -hmm. um, next week, we got action going on at the Last Strike Force show of 2013. After that, it's the debut of Bellator. Um, you guys were talking about big fights in January um, mm -hmm. locally here. Um, we heard rumors of Bellator. We still don't know when that date's going to happen, mm. but like, it seems like it's going to happen still yeah. in Albuquerque. I mean, we have Friday Night Fights next week. You have Giant Tapia Presents um, in February. February. In terms of locally in 2013, um, obviously the big thing is Holly Holm and Austin Trout. Mm. Um, before we get to them, do you see anybody else kind of stepping into the higher echelon category? I think... The two guys that can are Archie Ray Marcus are trying to rebuild him, but mm -hmm. you know he's had a couple of difficult losses on Showtime. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, maybe just rebuilding him up to the summer and then having him fight another top prospect. And Fidel Maldonado, this guy's got the skill. I mean, he's the lefty, and he was—I believe—he was robbed. For me, locally, that might be the robbery of the year. Him mm -hmm. losing to Michael Perez um, on a—they're both Golden Boy fighters, and it just blew me away that. Bernard Hopkins hung out with Michael Pettis the whole time. Didn't even know Fidel was a Golden Boy fighter. Mm. It's just unreal. <laughs> so I think those two guys can make a splash on the scene. And when it comes to, I guess, you know, you said we'll move on from there, but, you know, ho I mean, Holly Holm and Cecilia Breku's fight ultimately yeah, happening. That's the big one. Women's <laughs> boxing, for it to even have a pulse, needs that fight to go down, and mm -hmm. it needs to be shown on TV. We can't hide her anymore here mm -hmm. locally. Agreed. For that sport. And I think it, will, it can have a resurgence just based off of women's MMA being successful. Now. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I think that those... those I think it can capitalize, especially, I know the ticket sales haven't been that great, but it's still early for Ronda Rousey. But if that gets the attention, if Ronda Rousey pans out, if she becomes a big star, I mean, by the time that fight happens in the summertime with Holly mm -hmm. Holman to see a break is, um, you could capitalize on that momentum, like you were saying. Uh -huh. And you could, I mean, it seems like... With, like you, you were talking about with the uh, European influences, and maybe Miguel, Miguel Kessler or Carl Frotch. Under the undercard. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, their undercard. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. It seems like they might get the spot to themselves we'll see. as a big show. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be appealing to Showtime or HBO. It seems like Showtime is willing to push women. Yeah, well, put them on NBC Sports or I Wealth know. TV, I guess. I mean, you might get a fight of the year if you put it on Wealth TV. <laughs> but in terms of... Uh, Fighter in a UFC or John Dobson's going for a title. Um, certainly, Clay Guida's dropping the featherweight. Okay, um, an MMA guy. Yeah. Do you do you see anybody trading out? Out of Jackson, yeah. it'd have to be Hunter Tucker. Okay. I mean, he was uh, Sure Dog had a new, uh, I guess, a kind of uh, where they announced their prospects of the year. He was the very first one. Prospects to watch was the name of their campaign. So he was the very first one. This guy's got the skills. He actually just signed to Bellator. Okay. So. This might be his breakout year before he actually makes the jump in 2014 to the UFC. But uh, locally, with the smaller shows, it's, it's going to be Hunter Tucker, I think. Okay. Um, in terms of this, I want to take on boxing first. Because now, as we said earlier, we kind of moved on away from the big mm -hmm. super fight every year. To make a of that. So what now? I mean, what is the big fight that happens? I mean, do we just look forward to seeing a bunch of matchups? Or is there one kind of crown jewel fight that... You could see in 2013. A crown jewel? I don't know about that. I like the. I don't know. You think there's a crown jewel? I think. I think that Mayweather and the Guerrero is definitely one of the, one of the crown jewels. Hey, people are going to be surprised yeah, by how well Guerrero does. I, yeah, I think yeah, in that fight, he really impressed me with his rough and tough style. <laughs> yeah. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Another one. I mean, I still think even though that Manny Pacquiao got knocked out in the fashion that he did, he's still a crown jewel. I mean, whoever he fights, they're going to be interested in, in, in seeing that. Um, but uh, in we got to see about his health. So we got to see about his health yeah. first, and I hope he returns to it well. Um, but one of the, you know, we were asking about these up and comers to, to, you know, to fight, um, the, you know, up and comers versus legendary fighters. So that Zab Judah and that Danny Garcia, I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> and you know, we have uh, in terms of emerging superstars, you know, we got Canelo, we got Gary Russell, uh, we got Adrian Broner. That's what I'm excited about. Now we got, we got again, we have these superstar fighters. Um, that are appealing both to hardcore fans and, and casual fans. So I think that there was a, a lot of potential uh, matchups. You know, when Marquez coming off his huge victory, sure. I think that people are really interested. What is what is he going to do now? I mean, that's huge. Like I told you before, he's definitely cemented his place in history with that knockout of Pacquiao. So his next opponent, that could be a very interesting uh, matchup. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely optimistic. But in terms of the jewels, I would have to give it to that Mayweather Guerrero, you know, where Andre Berto, he was coming back. You know, his power, they thought that he might be able to pull it off. He certainly didn't. we never seen uh, Berto beat up in the fashion that he was. And Guerrero looked like he could go another four or five rounds. Um, 
So that type of fight, I mean, that's what we got. We got the technical supreme boxer in Floyd Mayweather, and then we got the rough and tough Guerrero. And the fans love Guerrero as well. Mm -hmm. His story, you know, with his wife, he took off from the thing he loved to make sure that he was by his wife's side, and he's come back with a vengeance. Um, so that, that, that matchup right there is just an, uh, it's just going to be classic, and I, I look forward. I don't know if it's going to be... Um, what do you say, the, the Cinco de Mayo or... Uh, Cinco de May 4th, I think yeah, it's going May down 4th, definitely. May 4th. Okay. And I think uh, Canelo... You know what, here are some. The Mayweather Guerrero, I like. Because mm -hmm. Mayweather's going to fight in May, and then he's going to fight in September. Does yeah. he fight Canelo in September? That'll depend on who Canelo fights on May 4th. Right. Because if he fights Austin Trout, that's that September fight isn't going to happen. So yeah. that's the one I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to. Austin Trout versus Canelo, if mm -hmm. they do decide to do it. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the only reason they would do it is just for him to prove himself. He doesn't have to do it because they don't share the same belt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's not, they're not each other's mandatories. Right. So if Canelo doesn't take it, you know, I kind of see why. But, I mean, you were given a title. Take this, take these challenges. Exactly. Um, Yorokis Gamboa versus Adrian Broner is another oh one that I, I want to see. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's a jewel. <laughs> uh, Nonito Donaire against Avram Modest is another one that Absolutely. I want to see. And if there's any other ones, I mean, I can't think. Oh. Gennady Golovkin. This will be the year. Of Gennady Golovkin. Forget. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Gennady I'm Golovkin. And he is serious. <laughs> he is serious. This is, I think, this time next year, Gennady Golovkin is going to be our boxer here. Absolutely. Year. That dude is phenomenal. Him and Sergio Martinez. Yeah. I want to see that fight. Yeah. Whether it's at 154 or at 160. Either right. guy says they fight each other. Austin Cloud has even said he'd go up to fight Sergio Martinez or Gennady Golovkin. Wow. That'd be a tough fight for him. Yes. If he fights Gennady Golovkin. I yeah, think. Golovkin, uh, he, he's, he's definitely one of those rising superstars. So uh, Golovkin Martinez is one. I'd love to see, and I think Golovkin, based off of what we saw Chavez do, I think Golovkin knocks him out in the, the first six rounds. What about what? Do you think there's any possibility that we would have a Rios versus Manny Pacquiao? Rios Manny Pacquiao, oh, man, I don't, I don't know. Man. But if it happened, would you consider it a jewel? Rios Juan Manuel Marcus, I consider more of a jewel okay. than Rios Manny Pacquiao. Really? There okay. might be. Well, I mean, just because. How, how technical Marcus is, I guess I can see what you mean. I mean, yeah. there'd be a war between... And, and Pacquiao would have Marcus something and more to prove. He would try to get that knockout. So hopefully, go. I'd love to see that yeah. one. So, I, I mean, I said that... It's possible. I, I, I see that after after uh, that match uh, with Marcus, I, I said, I still want to see Pacquiao versus Rios. And I think they might want to do it just to build off of the guys within top rank. We forgot about Matisse. Lucas Matisse. Yo, oh, what are we doing goodness. today? Uh, Golovkin, Matisse, I'm sorry, man. Uh, they, they have some good matches. Yeah. You know, but it, like I'm just trying to think. Who Matisse is look, yeah, Matisse, Brandon Rios. How do we? How do we not think of that? Yeah, that, yeah, that's a crazy. That, that is a huge one. Yeah, that would be an right awesome there. one. So yeah. that one, Matisse versus Brandon Rios. Matisse versus Danny Garcia. Matisse against anybody yeah. in the top five in that way. Absolutely. Five. So with these fights, do you see in terms of the power shift between HBO and Showtime? Oh, Seems like Showtime has really pushed ahead this year yep. in terms of getting the major fights. Absolutely. Mm. Um, now that you know, I don't know how Larry Merchant's going to be factored in. He's gone now. Mm. And now that you've seen, you know, more Ronaldo take the reins of Showtime Boxing, we've seen some broadcast changes. Um, mm. Where do you see which network gaining these big fights you guys are talking about? Mm. Uh, it's, it's Showtime. Yeah, Just because of the fact of what they're doing. They're taking a page out of uh, the MMA uh, side of things. And maybe mm. because they were, you know, for a little bit, you know, earlier this year and at the end of last year, they were more of an MMA network than sure. they were a boxing network, if you think about it. So by showing these preliminary fights, you know, you see guys that you don't necessarily know, so that's great that they're actually doing that, and it's helping them, I yes. think. And then the fighters that they're getting, and you have a lot of these fighters that aren't going exclusively with the network. You know, mm -hmm. Adrian Broner and Mayweather are HBO for the most part, but mm -hmm. we've seen Cotto fight on both networks. Yep. We've seen a lot of guys. Pacquiao uh, Mosley. Nonito Donaire fight mm -hmm. on both networks. Uh, Pacquiao Mosley, as you mentioned, was another one. So Showtime is doing a lot to, to, to make some noise. and. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't too. I mean, maybe it helps that Moro. He's very knowledgeable in, in both sports. But what did you, you hate Chris Johnson? I didn't hate him. I still think HBO had the better commentary. Yeah, no, you know, Max I'll, I'll and Jim. Uh, their, their, their knowledge, their knowledge, knowledge is unreal. Is, uh, yeah, I can't compete with I, that. I completely give you that. But yeah, but I think Showtime will. You know, yeah, they took a huge step forward this year. So, mm -hmm. to see them to continue to do that. I got a weird question for both of you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, because I was looking on some fight a year list from boxing. There's another Japanese fight on there. And mm. last year, you guys named, I forgot the guy's name, but you named your fight of the year after a fight in Japan. Mm. Do you think Japan, because now it's really, Japan in terms of mixed martial arts has really kind of fallen off. You know, we had the Dream Show, New Year's Eve, but really other than that, we're not really relevant in the fight scene. Mm -hmm. But in boxing, you seem like it gave these fights happening with the WBA, WBO in Japan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can Japan be some kind of a force in the major fight scene, 
you know, globally. In the lower weight classes. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, you same. don't have too yeah. many guys that are heavyweights or you sure, know, light heavyweights. It's, I mean, yeah. they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're not just E-Honda, they're, I'm like, yeah. you know what, you know, <laughs> Japanese people are like the, Mex <laughs> the, the Mexicans of Asians, bro. They're little. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. that's what I think. The lower yeah, weight the lower classes definitely have. And, and also, I mean, you mm -hmm. had a champion for a while, Nishioka, that fought uh, Nonito Donaire. Yeah, he was so champion for how many years? Yeah. Yeah. Good nine, ten years, yeah. he was undefeated. Mm -hmm. So, in the lower weight classes... Do you see them crossing over, though, in terms of that mix you were talking about with Lucas Batista? Because it seems like Europe is definitely in that mix in terms of getting their guys in there. Right? You know what? Mm -hmm. I don't, Asia is not really... Happening. Asia, it's just because of the fact people aren't exposed to them too much. And, I mean, boxing... It's it's a Western sport. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. that's sure. where you see most of those guys come, and that's why we don't even know a lot of the opponents that the Klitschko's have, despite the fact that they're they're two guys in the pound top ten pound for pound list. It's, right. you, it's just names that we don't listen. And if you want to, I mean, this isn't necessarily true anymore. To conquer, uh, I guess, the TV networks, you have to go through America. A lot of these European networks are making good money. Mm -hmm. They're off locally, so mm -hmm. yeah. So I think. Yeah. I think th they might be able to make some noise, but it would be in the lower weight classes, but not as loud as gotcha. you know, all the other ones. Unless they're like Nonita Donaire and uh, Brian Veloria, where mm -hmm. these guys are Americanized. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Exactly. Um, let's shift to mixed martial arts. Um, now, it seems like, for some reason, people are glossing over the injury mm -hmm. controversy here. And I want to talk about that for a second. Um, it seems like people are ignoring this problem. I don't know if it's just me. Mm -hmm. It seems like no one's really tackling the problem of guys getting hurt in training camp. Mm -hmm. But it seems like it's just been a lot of bad luck, you know, bad things happen. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be no kind of at least investigation as to why these injuries are happening. Mm -hmm. I don't want, in my opinion, I don't want like a solution to the problem. I want at least some effort into trying to find it out. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, you know, Dana White and even some other notable figures in the sport kind of just saying, you know, things will get better, you know, just cross her fingers, <laughs> mm -hmm. pray, you know, and everything will be all right. But, I just see the same thing kind of happening in 2013 and nothing gets addressed. Mm -hmm. you, you visit these camps all the time. Is there any kind of way to just simple things, you know, like not having a guy kill himself in training camp all day, like give the guy more rest, not having the same, you know, like the whole injury with Shot Evans, Diego Santos rolled over his foot. Yeah. Like having, you know, your top guys roll by themselves. Is there simple things like that? Do you see things that alarm you when you visit these gyms? I, that you're like, why is this happening in an MMA gym? Like, is this obvious? And even though you're not a trainer, you're not, you know, a super yeah, expert in no, the field, like, it seems obvious, you know, why is this happening? You know, injury could happen. There. You, I, you kind of do see it. And boxing, I guess, the mentor plays such an instrumental part, and they're mm -hmm. always looking for little nuances or, you know, just little mistakes that each person has. Mm -hmm. And they don't take too much as a lot of the MMA gyms. You just have way too many people either rolling together or sparring together that you 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 don't you're not consistently monitoring them mm -hmm. for their every move and that's why I think a lot of the injuries happen some guy does something incorrectly or it's just too much work these guys are pushing themselves so hard to be that next name right and the talent let's not forget about the talent you're fighting world class athletes like gyms like fit here in Albuquerque and UFC you're fighting some world class athletes so, of course, you're going to get hurt when sure. you're mm -hmm. facing one of the best ever. Mm -hmm. In boxing, it's not like that. Maybe they have one or two jewels each of theirs, mm -hmm. and they're in different weight classes. Mm -hmm. But in MMA, it seems like it doesn't matter the weight as long as you're within, especially the spacing of weight, if you think right. about it. It's 10, 15 pounds from each weight class. Right. So every day, you're training with somebody who might outweigh you by mm -hmm. 20, 25 pounds. Yeah. I mean, in boxing, you spar with someone who might outweigh you, but it's yeah. you want to match yourself to it. And I think that's what it is with MMA is these guys are just... I mean, there's nothing wrong with it that they're trying too hard. And right. There's too much going on. And but guys yeah. tried harder in 2010, 2009. Yeah, well, that's they the, trained with the world class talent back then. Yeah. What has changed now? Why? Why are these guys getting huge ACL injuries? These massive injuries that are keeping them out for this prolonged time. It just seems it can't be just bad. It's not just a coincidence. Who well, knows? You know what? It might be the bonuses. You know, you're trying yeah. to you're trying to bust your butt so bad to be the fight of the, the, the night, night knock out of the night, night submission yeah. of the night. It, it that might be it, and we can't say that all the injuries happen in training. Maybe it happens during the fights where yeah. they're trying to bust their butts. And then well, those fights are getting canceled, though, because yes, they're in training. true. And so. it's more, and we mentioned this before, too, in terms of, like, comparing it to boxing. You know, mixed martial arts, of course, is uh, it's going to be more versatile. There's more, there's no more room for in, injury, sure. you know? And then you, you pose a good question, though. You know, is it more of, like, you know, this pure carelessness, the entourage? You know, even, I see, like, in boxing, sometimes a lot of guys, like, you know, Manny Pacquiao, 
uh, Roy Jones, he like, you know, they'll be back. Oh, I'm, I'm giving a, uh, a concert before the fight. I'm going to go play some ball before the fight. <laughs> I, that used to always nerve me. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm like, you, sh you need to be concentrating on the fight. Yeah. Anything can happen right there, and then we're out of a fight as fans. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you fight tonight, and that's what you do, yeah. and that's it. So, you know, it really, and I like the, the point of the mentor. Who's our mentor? That's a, that's a big aspect of it all as well. But, you know, that's something that I definitely see in the differences between the sports. It's just like you're using so many more limbs and so many more techniques. I mean, it's just like, it almost seems like it goes with the territory. But at the end of the day, as fans, we really don't want to hear that. No. We want to see the fight. Or the consumer. You know? Yeah. They're at the product. Exactly. Guess, yeah. But I don't know about any type of, you know. Yeah. A, a sensible type of solutions or repercussions because there's you know there's another good point that you mentioned like fighter of the night fighter you know all these different types of KO and, the, and these bonuses but I don't know if that can be drawn up in, in the contract as well because to that there's no really lose lose even if you penalize the fighter you know you got an injury boom you're not getting that pay yeah. but we're still out of a fight yeah. fans yeah. So well, they don't really get paid hard. either. I mean, yeah. they're out of the thing too. Yeah. Um, but what's the, I want to talk about the fights in mixed martial arts. You know, everybody's talking about Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, Anderson Silva, John Jones. Those are the two super fights. Um, really, in the heavyweight division, there's a lot of you know controversy or a lot of intrigue between Daniel Cormier wanting to stay at heavyweight and fight his teammate or drop down and fight John Jones. Um, but there seems to be a lot of controversy over. You know, guys not earning title shots. First mm -hmm. we saw it with Chael Sutton, then Nick Diaz. And now we might see even with Daniel Cormier. He hasn't never fought a lightweight before. By heavyweight, excuse me. And honestly, you know, I heard one thing Randy Couture said. He said that Daniel Cormier was kind of lazy back in his old wrestling wow. days. I couldn't believe he said that. Yeah. Like, Randy Couture <laughs> doesn't really talk trash. And, excuse me, Daniel Cormier is a pretty nice guy. And, like, he said, like, Daniel Cormier wasn't the hardest worker back mm -hmm. in the day. But now I think he's kind of changed things. So that kind of... Brought up some things in my mind if he could even make 205, you know, if he can, can't cut the weight. So I just, I guess, want to ask you just in general of UFC giving fights because of, of what the fans want to see, mm -hmm. or you know, guys getting screwed, like you said, well, you like it because MMA, UFC, mm -hmm. guys earn title shots. Mm -hmm. Maybe this guy, A plus B equals C. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, you know, A plus Z, you know, you know, it's just <laughs> the equation is jacked, like, because you can talk. Because you can draw people, you mm -hmm. get the title shot. Yeah. And we've seen that twice, especially with Nick Diaz, where mm -hmm. he's not even guaranteed to even make it or do his obligation to fulfill himself to earn himself a title shot. Whereas Johnny Hendricks, he's done everything. He's knocked out people, but he's yeah. not a draw. People don't care who he is. So he gets screwed while Nick Diaz is awarded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Heidi, what do you think about that? Do you think that hurts the sports? We see, we see more guaranteed title shots. Like, even with Cyborg, I mean, Cyborg, we have no proof she can make 135. <laughs> and yet, she's going to get awarded a title shot for no reason compared mm -hmm. to, you know, even though, you know, Misha Tate, Sarah Kaufman, yeah. they both lost to Ronda Rousey. If they beat people, technically, they've earned it more than Cyborg. So, mm -hmm. what do you guys think about that? I don't know. It's That's where MMA, I think, at the second half of the year, uh, I think Dana White saw that the injury plague that hit them was, you know, it, I mean, it freaked him out. So he says, all right, we might take a page out of boxing where we just have these, you know, this guy who might be fifth in that mm -hmm. division fight the number one guy. We're, mm -hmm. we're, and we're seeing guys calling each other out. All right, I want that one. GSP wants Diaz. Now he's going to get him. Right. Johnny Hendricks deserves that title shot. Yep. Mm -hmm. So That's what does he do? Does he just hang out and wait? I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult for, I mean, it, it, for the entertainment value, he's, he's going to do it. And does he kind of have to do it, I guess, right. because of the injury bug? Right. So... That's where he takes a page out of the boxing. I mean, I'm used to seeing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we see I'm used to boxing. seeing it too. I mean, there's so much politics involved. Yeah. And one thing, like in boxing, I see when guys are going to move to different weight classes or they're going to fight at a catch weight. A lot of times, they go right over ten guys. The yeah. I mean, have actually earned that <laughs> sure, because that's it's true. the name. Don't it's just the name. the name. So people are willing for the yeah. name, but that's why a lot of the old school guys, mm -hmm. um, they didn't like the pound for pound list because they're saying you guys are getting so excited about this guy, and you know he has the potential, but he hasn't been that fabulous in terms of to put him on a pound for pound and then he gets knocked off by another guy. Mm -hmm. So there's there's no really significance to that meaning okay. anymore. You know what I mean? So they have to be careful with that in terms of do they actually deserve that title fight. But I think that that's also too, it's just when we know this in both sports, it's just not about the fighting. It's sure. not about just the yeah. skill set. Exactly. It's about putting the butts in the seats. Yeah. That's why a lot of fighters are really great. We're, like Look at uh, Matiste or, or, or Golovkin. Um, outside the ring or like certain personalities sure. that you'll see it you you really not going to see that mm -hmm. you're going to be appreciative of their fighting skills but then you got somebody else he's a decent fighter 
but you know he's going to cause mad controversy. You and you want to see what happens. You care we like that. Yeah. You know that's why we still got wrestling. Okay, yeah, sure. so it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a dramatic. <laughs> You're man. exactly right. It's I 100 agree with you. I think with Johnny Hendricks, you see kind of a boring guy. You saw yeah. the, I think he did a, a pretty special on him. You mm -hmm. see him. You know, he's a hunter, okay, he's an alright personality, <laughs> like, it's just kind of boring, like, Matt Hughes, like, he's always the good guy, right, mm. he's a dominant welterweight champion, as soon as he got an ultimate fighter, he's kind of a jerk, and people <laughs> hate him, but you know what, people care either way, yeah, I think, mm -hmm. you know, even though people care, you know, he's the greatest welterweight of all time before that, but you, now you have more invested into his personality, mm. I think a lot of these guys, even though he's seen with Carlos Condon, you know, you kind of have to open yourself up, you have to be... Someone of come on, people have to care mm -hmm. whether you win or lose. Yep. Like just with Josh Koscheck, he's not going to win the title, mm -hmm. but you know what? He's going to get more big time fights than a uh, John Fitch. I mean, he's, yeah. I mean, he's fighting um, what's his name, Robbie Lawler. I mean, that's an intriguing fight, and that's a that's a Robbie Lawler has a name. Where John Fitch, you know, you're going to fight somebody you know lesser known but higher ranked like Eric Silva, who's super dangerous, yes. but no one knows who necessarily who he is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he loses that fight, it's going to really hurt him, even mm -hmm. though Eric Silva has skills. So I think that's definitely an issue. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about one more thing before we let it go. Um, Bellator. Okay. They are making a push on Spike TV, like we said, in a couple of weeks. Is there any chance Bellator makes an impact? Because compared to in years past, UFC only had about 65%, 75% of the talent. Now, they have about 95% yeah. of men and women. Mm -hmm. With Bellator, I mean, to be honest, they have no draws. I mean, Eddie Alvarez is not a draw. He's mm -hmm. a star in the organization. King Mo, I mean, he's not really a draw, to be honest. I mean, being real about it. He has a lot of charisma and excitement. He signed a double deal with TNA Wrestling and with Bellator. Yeah. So they're pushing him. I mean, War Machine, just get out of jail. Um, if you heard about Paul Daly, I mean, he got in a bar fight in the UK. Mm. <laughs> he can't leave, so he can't. So now, War Machine's hurt. Paul that. Daly can't get out of the United Kingdom. Now, it's just, they're trying to make this big push on Spike, but yet, are you going to get people like you right. that see it? You're like, I don't know who these dudes are. They're not even, like, super ranked. Why am I even right. caring about them? Even mm. though the fight's intriguing, Michael Chandler, he's entertaining. Yes. But he's not top wise. How's he top 10? <laughs> you know what? It seems, it seems like this would be just like a college combat sports. You know, they'll watch like college football, college <laughs> yeah. basketball, that type but of thing. But college. Not on the like, yeah. top level. But people think of college as the top mm. level, though. Yeah, people yeah, care yeah. about it. People care about the national you title. You transcend. Game. Somewhat more than the NFL, so people mm. like it's mm. super popular, bro. And then, plus, you see the transition of, okay, these guys are going to the NFL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also all these tradition of, you know, Notre Dame. Alabama, so on. Yeah. What's Bellator? They don't have any of that tradition. They don't have any of those yeah. older stars. They're going to be going build. to the UFC, you know? Yeah. I don't know. They're right. moving up. It's just, you know, that's basically just, I guess. I what is their chance of being successful? I like Bellator, but it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's, it's a phase, but basically they're, these guys are going to go from a small show, two or three fights of Bellator. They're going to leave. Probably the UFC. Yeah. So that's what's difficult for them, especially since the UFC now has so much of the core of, you know, the best fighters in the world. But... I mean, I think shows like that, I, it's just going to be the hardcore fans. Maybe just casual fans tuning in just because of the fact, hey, that UFC last week was pretty good. Let's see mm -hmm. what this Bellator has to yeah. offer. So. And with that Bellator, like, kind of like strike force. I mean, does it, is it in terms of a good thing, you know, where you have, you know, some superior fighter that was on strike force or Bellator, it just constantly creates that question in fans' mind. What if you went to the UFC? Yeah. <laughs> what if you went to the UFC? Yeah. You know, they're building up this fighters that can transcend. The Strike Force had way more yeah. entertaining names back in the they day. Did. Right. Like, you take a look at uh, Frank Shamrock, Phil Baroni. Mm -hmm. Now, these guys aren't going to fight for the welterweight title, but these two guys talk trash. They're entertaining. Mm -hmm. you, you know what? They put on an entertaining fight. Scott Smith, when he got cut from the UFC, huge comebacks with him. Entertaining fighter. Yeah. He's not going to be a mm -hmm. title contender. But at least Strike Force had guys that were intriguing. They were rising stars. They were outside of the top ten. I don't really see that other than maybe a couple yeah. of guys in the lower weight division in Bellator. Right. So I don't know. I put Eddie Alvarez. I mean, he was, he's waiting. He's in limo now because UFC and Bellator are bidding for his services. And mm -hmm. now Bellator matched the deal. Why couldn't they exceed the deal? UFC's not willing yeah. to pay him. Right. Bellator needs him more than UFC does. That's they don't true. care about Eddie Alvarez. Let him go. Who cares? Yeah. Are you guys okay with that, though? Like, as a, as a combat, uh, you know, fan, um, in terms of like you know okay so we have the strike force champion we have the bellator champion and then we have the ufc champion i mean that's some of the, well, the I think, problems i have yeah well you, if you will i think you have to realize that the ufc has all the number one guys right so you have to think of it as we your i think your thing was okay you're confused on strike force mm -hmm. with this guy this guy 
I think he had a good point because the heavyweight division of mm-hmm. Strike Force, I think, was better than the heavyweight division in the UFC. But mm-hmm. now, if you look, there's no more heavyweight division yeah. of Strike Force. Yeah. All the number one ranked guys are in the UFC. So mm-hmm. in Bellator, there's no way they're getting on, Tim, mm-hmm. on the pound for pound list yeah. in the weight division. It's, just, it's impossible. And how can you <laughs> rate, like, for Tricky <laughs> Pepful Friday over a champion in the UFC? It's, it's not going to happen. You can't. Mm-hmm. Or Ben Askren. If Ben Askren can't destroy every welterweight in Bellator, there's no way he's going to be ranked over Carlos Condon no. or Rory McDonald. No way. Impossible. Mm-hmm. No impossible. way. And I guess that's where it kind of differs from boxing. I mean, you can't consider XFC, Bellator, UFC, like the belt system in boxing because yeah. the belts... Not and but I guess you could kind of think it with promoters. So top rank and Golden Boy, the right. top two top guns, they don't have every single champion. Right. So that's why every fight, whether it's on ESPN, whether it's on Wealth TV, yeah. HBO, or Showtime, Showtime yeah. people are going to tune in, and that's where it's it differs still, a little yeah, bit. Exactly yeah. because that because there's no necessarily minor leagues of boxing. Exactly. Yeah, you will. There's minor channels and networks, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but not sure. a not a minor league. But so. the belts transcends through all the different. I mean, let's networks. hope just because you know. I you hope know, it's successful, but you, you look. I mean, you look at what it's on paper. Yeah. If they don't start making huge money offers to free agents that are yeah. available, how can they survive? Like and that? I think the Bellators and the XSC serve just, I mean, they serve to, and they cater to regional fan bases. For well, instance, Bellators are national TV. And they are a national but TV. But XSC's a regional They TV. are a national TV. They're, they're on you Spike now. They got all these new specials they're doing. Mm-hmm. Bellator 360. They're going to have a reality show. I mean, they're big, planning on a full push. XFC's not investing yeah. that much money into it. Yeah, and what I meant by that is basically they'll go after these fighters just because they have a huge following sure. in a specific mm-hmm. area. Not necessarily, it's not national. I mean, yeah. It's so it's, it'll be interesting how that plays off. I don't want to see these smaller promotions going away, and I don't, I don't think they're, they yeah. are. Yeah. And I don't think they are. Any other predictions, um, wish list you want to see in 2013 before we say goodbye? Or? Klitschko versus Klitschko. Oh, come on. I knew I was going to get out of here with that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I, don't, I don't want that. I mean, the heavyweight division's out for a while. Um, Deontay Wilder made some noise, I think, yeah. this year. So yeah. we'll see how he... You've been talking about a couple of heavyweights. Yeah. yeah, so Deontay Wilder, I mean, maybe because he's American, and I'm, okay. that's mm-hmm. why I'm so much on him, and I'm hoping he's the next one just to dethrone one of them. But well, It's uh, pretty bad because even the American heavyweight legends are from Klitschko. You see George yeah. Foreman on the intros there. Yeah. Yeah. Go get him, Klitschko. Right, yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> just alone. I mean, there's Dennis Dirty. If he fights the American, yeah. they're not going to care who he is. Yeah, even right. American, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. It's... it's but, I mean, I can't believe before that Golovkin. I'm really interested in what this guy's going to do because yeah. uh, he's just got the technical and his punches it just look like they hurt. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, just, I'm just looking forward to see what all the, the rising stars, the new wave of superstars are really going to do uh, this year in boxing. I mean, we already discussed the, the jewel fights that we hope for, but, I mean, I'm just really optimistic again. I mean, I've, I've never just had boxing just be like, you know, I'm dead. But, like, in the last two years, you know, I've really had some really frustrating frustrations with the sport sure. and now you know I'm, I'm getting that excitement back so i'm looking yeah. forward to that it's, it's it's easing back and i completely mm-hmm. agree and uh i'm interested in the, the female division there in in the ufc i'm, Me I'm too. very excited if they about build that. it correctly because we mm-hmm. have yet to mm-hmm. hear another women's fight besides the main yeah i so, mean you got to build a division here, so. yeah no you got to build and i'm, I'm we'll glad at the excitement for that just because i mean they're they're just as talented i agree it's especially i mean boxing might be a little bit different but with mma i think you know, it's if it's not nearly if it's not on par, it's nearly on par. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely excited about that. And then you mentioned, I mean, we're looking to see what Golovkin can do. This guy doesn't have a personality outside of the gym, he and does. we're so excited about yeah. him. So yeah. definitely something huge. So it's going to be a great year for both co- both combat sports. Um, stay tuned for uh, really our Twitter feed at the Low Blow, our Facebook page, um, Low Blow Podcast. Um, just type that into the search; will pop up there. Also, our YouTube page um, that has all our interviews. Uh, we cover most of the events through U.S. Combat Sport and Southwest Fight News. Southwestfightnews.com has all the latest really interviews, has all the latest photos taken by Will Fox. You see in the background, all those photos are taken by a really great photographer, Will Fox. Will does a great job with those. Um, we'll have pretty much, I think, the segments we're looking forward to is more radio excerpts on our YouTube page. So mm-hmm. along with that, you'll see the great video interviews where he does. I think the latest one up there is kind of the outtakes of 2012. The outtakes. Done. Okay. <laughs> So please check that out. Also, you know, always we'll be try to give out more stuff away. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But um, we'll be back Thursday on Fight Fans Radio. Um, we're gonna have a couple of guests. We'll see what happens. Eight o'clock Mountain Time, ten o'clock Eastern Time. Low Blow five hundred five at gmail dot com. So for Will McClary and Jorge Hernandez, I'm Justin Goodrum. Wish you a very happy New Year to twenty thirteen, and uh, let's hope for no injuries and all the fights happen. <laughs> so we'll see you. See you next. Peace. Week. Peace. 
good stuff, gentlemen.